on developments in finance and sustainability. Um, we're very excited to have this this two day webinar with all of you, and as I, I can see, we're already um, over seventy participants, which is wonderful. Um, so the um, the just a quick thing about the name OI Conference. The OI comes from OICOS, the student organization that Stephen and I have been involved with, which is focusing on sustainability in in management and economics. And we're, um, we're, we're being supported also by OICOS International in this. So this is where the OI Conference comes from, the OI. Um, so the idea of this um, uh, webinar is it's the second one in a series that Stephen and I have started and we want to focus on questions of how the um, sustainability matters are taken into consideration in the finance industry and we um, have, have, have uh, brought together here panels from um, composed of professionals working in the industry and activists, but also um, academics to bring together various um, groups of people who really can bring a lot to bear onto on this question. Um, quickly on myself, I'm a PhD student in economics at the New School. And yeah, um, Stephen, do you maybe want to introduce yourself quickly as well? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Steven Snyder. I'm a master's student at Harvard studying sustainability, and my background is in finance, and that's why I am very happy to have um, you all here so that we can learn about developments in sustainability and finance. And I'm really excited for this very interactive session. Um, so get ready to learn, get ready to talk if you feel like you want to share, and uh, I'll hand it back to you, Oliver. Wonderful. Thank you, Stephen. The title of this session is Climate Grief and Personal Change. If you've read the description, which is perfectly okay if you haven't, um, this session is not yet on the topic of finance per se, but we thought it would be really interesting to start off with something a little different that is getting us grounded kind of for this, for these two days of focusing on a, a, a strong um, industry to look at what are the emotional responses to questions of climate change and that we can, that, that we can use in our approach to many of these things. So um, um, I'll quickly introduce Rabbi Katie Allen, who has put together this panel or, um, of um, and, and the moderators. Rabbi Katie Allen is one of the co-conveners of the Jewish Climate Action Network, and which has started in December of 2013 at Limud Boston. She is also the founder and spiritual leader of Mayan Tikva, a wellspring of hope. She began her career as a biology teacher, turned to writing and editing educational materials, and then started teaching Hebrew school and became involved in family and adult education before entering rabbinical school. Rabbi Katie Allen has put together a group of interfaith um, leaders to focus on the question of solastalgia or eco-anxiety. And please, Rabbi Katie Allen, take it. Oh, sorry, two more things. Um, the, um, we have, um, sorry, um, my bad. Um, we will conduct polls quickly so that we know where people are roughly from in this group. Um, and you, you should see it on your screen right now. Please just fill in whatever is right. There are three questions. Wonderful. Um, so as I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I'm gonna comment it very much. You can all see it on your screens since we don't have anyone who has um, come in via phone. And I, I think that will just give us a little bit of an idea of what are the um, kind of what is what is the makeup of the group of people over 110 that by now who have joined us for, for this session and um, with that I'll gladly um, give you the space Rabbi Katie Allen thank you thank you so much thank you so much I really appreciate it and I'm happy to be part of this um, so I just want to say a few words in general about this topic and then we're going to be breaking down into smaller groups um, this whole idea, this, this, there, there's like new vocabulary in, um, in our language to describe the phenomenon of, 
of of having a an emotional difficult emotional response to environmental degradation and, and climate change so it can be called eco despair it can be called eco depression um, there's also this uh, new word solastalgia which comes from nostalgia it's the, that's where they got the word from and nostalgia is this sort of longing or homesickness for something that that's gone or that is we're separated from or something in the past and so this is an expression of the distress that we experience in response to environmental change um, when that's we're directly contact either through direct contact with something happening around us or just hearing about something or knowledge about it. We don't actually have to personally be experiencing it to have these um, difficult emotions and emotional responses to what's going on. So, but basically it encompasses all of the dark emotions that we might have, whether it's grief or despair or fear or anger or hopelessness, um, any, any of these kinds of emotional responses fall into these categories of solastalgia and eco despair. And so I just, to, to give a small example, to give you an idea of this from just from my personal life, um, there was a, a house on a fairly good sized lot near where I live where they cut, they um, tore down the house and then they cut down all the trees. And there were, had been quite a few trees on that lot. And I could just feel the, the sadness and the, and the despair that that launched in me. And that was just one tiny little lot of land as opposed to, you know, half the Amazon or something. So hearing about these things can just bring up within us all kinds of emotions. And so then we also may feel powerless like, what can we do? We might not have any idea what we can do. And so a lot of people then get stuck there in that situation of it's upsetting. I don't know what to do, you know, and then there's just despair. So this is something that's just becoming more and more common. And so the questions become like this, 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 this session is on sustainability and this is really about sustainability of our of our spirits of our souls of our sense of well-being for the for ourselves and for those with whom we come in contact through our work and so how the question becomes like how do we imagine manage our own emotions how do we respond to and acknowledge the emotions of those not just ourselves but those around us and those with whom we work and how do we remain resilient in the face of what we see and hear and learn and part of it is even just starting with this acknowledgement that this is real. Um, but this is the area that we're going to begin to explore. Like, what is this? What responses do we have? How do we, how do we remain resilient? There are lots of different answers. It's kind of personal. And yet there, there are also universals about this that can touch us no matter um, who we are, where we are, just our very sense of being human. So I'm delighted to have three of my colleagues um, with us who are going to, um, we're going to be breaking into smaller groups. Um, and then, and each one of us is then going to lead the smaller group will there be opportunity for you to interact and share too. So um, the, you will end up with one, either with myself or with Pallison's on Grenfell Lee, who's a United Methodist Climate Resilience Chaplain in the greater Boston area, uh, formerly a mic, uh, mic molecular biologist. Um, and she was at the seminary at Boston University. Um, and she has her PhD in ecological ethics. And she also teaches, preaches, and writes about intersections of grief, ecofeminism, nature connection, permaculture, and ethics. And Rabbi Moshe Giventhal is the founder of Water from the Rock, Eco Chaplaincy and Environmental Education. Um, he has a master's in clinical psychology and ordination from the non-denominational rabbinical school of Hebrew College in Boston. And he resides in the Metro Detroit area and works with communities of faith and grassroots organizers on issues of environmental and climate disruption and injustice. 
and Reverend Dr. Ian Meverach is the founding minister of the Common Street Spiritual Center in Natick, Massachusetts, a love-centered community that values many spiritual paths and is a hub for environmental justice and peace activism. He's an ordained American, American Baptist minister and holds an um, MDiv and a PhD in ecological theology and ethics from Boston University and is a facilitator of the work that reconnects a form of eco-spirituality rooted in the teachings of Joanna Macy. So the, these are your potential um, facilitators in the smaller groups. And uh, now I'm turning it over to our host to, to send us off into the smaller groups. Awesome, thank you very much, Rabbi Allen. Um, so what is going to happen is we have broken everybody up into four groups. There's about 25 people in each. Um, there is one moderator per group. And what will happen is a pop-up will occur that will move you in. Um, and then feel free to speak. If you wanna stay on mute, that's your choice. Um, and then I'm going to open it up now. And when we are done, which will be about 20 minutes from now, um, we'll bring everybody back and uh, we'll have a discussion then. Um, and please stick around. Uh, we'll have sessions throughout the rest of the day. All right, good luck. Have a good discussion. And you should be back from your breakout groups now. Um, I will hand things over to uh, Rabbi Allen to finish our session. Well, thank you. Um, I just want to invite at this point a little bit of if if people from different groups, if there's something that you'd like to share that really struck you or that if you something that that you feel like you learned or something that you just want to share with the rest of the group. This is a time for a little bit of sharing in the bigger group here to just kind of bring all this together. Um, so there's a, there's a, uh, so, someone has a hand raised. I might just unmute this person quickly. Okay. Um, yeah. If anybody wants to speak, you can just raise your hand. Seven, seven, O, M, O. Yeah. Do you want to, okay. Seven, 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 O, M, O. Did you have something you wanted to share? No, no, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. That's, all right. That's all right. Um, Maybe I could, I could share a, a yeah, report back great. from our group. Yep, that would be great. One of the major trends from our group was people sharing the feelings that they have related to government inaction or deception around environmental destruction, also corporate activities that um, seem destructive may be supported by the government. Um, so I, I, I'm seeing in my group people have, that could be a locus of feelings of um, eco-anxiety relating to government action in action, corporate action in action. And I'm, I'm thinking, can we also use that and then open up a space even more where we then get into talking about kind of even deeper levels of grief, not only government action or inaction, but the losses that stand behind that, the destruction itself, and, and what happens when we process that. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So, uh, and from our group, one of the things that came out was the importance of finding, finding a, a pathway and a type of action that works for you where you feel like you're making some kind of a difference, that that's a real powerful um, tool for channeling the, the emotions and sort of being able to get past the point of being really angry um, and, or really sad. And not that those emotions are necessarily going to go away, but being able to come to a place where you're able to work with other people um, more easily. 
Uh, would somebody like from the other two groups like to share? Talison or Moshe, you want to share from your group? Okay, uh, Talison. Sure, I'll just, thanks, Katie. Um, you know, we talked about the foundation of a resilient mindset for the resilience that we need to do in terms of their practical and strategic um, engagement. And we talked a bit about aspects of the resilient mindset. And then we worked through, uh, I kind of offered um, a three minute breathing space practice, which comes from the book, The Mindful Way Through Depression. John Cabot Zinn, I think it's John, was one of the, uh, anyway, last name Cabot Zinn is a famous um, Buddhist author who is one of the four authors of this book. And so anybody who wants to find and use that resource that just can help ground people throughout the day about a variety of things, the pandemic, the climate, or anything else that's causing anxiety or destabilization or um, grief or suffering. And so we kind of walked through that three minute breathing space practice and, the, and people, some people shared that they found it to be a helpful tool to have in the kind of toolkit or. Thank you. And Moshe, you want to share about your group? Yeah, um, I think our discussion was um, pretty similar to Reverend Mevrock's discussion of um, the anger and frustration of uh, an action and the misuse of, uh, of money and resources. Um, and we also talked a bit about how we, psych we ourselves cycle through all the feelings on a regular basis. And uh, sometimes we feel them intensely. Um, and some people feel them more intensely and others less so, but we definitely have people in our lives um, that feel these things very intensely. In particular, we talked a bit about uh, young folks uh, organizing through Fridays for the Future and um, the intensity of energy and emotion shared there and uh, as well as an extinction rebellion. Um, which of course have, um, you know, have their, their positives as well as challenges to, um, to expressing emotions that intensely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I, um, we, we need to end in a minute or two. So I just want to thank everybody for sharing what you shared. Um, I think the important piece that we have we have done here is to put all this on the table for you to have in your mind as you're going through the rest of the sessions and uh, just to acknowledge this, keep it, keep it in the back of your mind, the front of your mind, but allow it, allow yourself to, um, to, to deal with whatever kinds of emotions that you might have and to find other people who are also on this same page and, and help them and work with them. So we're going to close just with a, um, a word or two of a m message of idea for going forward. And so um, Moshe, would you like to begin, please? You need to unmute yourself. That is vital. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share two thoughts. One is that however we and our families um, and our communities are doing right now. Um, and as much as the pandemic specifically is in some ways unprecedented in our lifetime, that actually Christ, very large scale crises um, have happened in all previous generations. And so we have it within ourselves from our ancestors who have survived all the things that they survived, we physically have it in our bodies, in our genes, the resilience to be able to overcome and to build and rebuild through whatever is happening. Um, and I invite you to remind that yourself that as well as other people that are in deep crisis. And I wanna make a note about um, this moment of pandemic in a context of climate change. So someone in my group brought up that um, the, cl the climate change and sustainability discussion is being moved to the side as we deal with pandemic. And I think the pandemic can actually be really pivotal in organizing uh, climate action. 
in the form of bringing to people's eyes that kinds of societal disruption that, that we are definitely going to see more and more of without sustained action in a way that's much harder to deny. So if we can link um, people's experiences of the pandemic to the reality of climate disruption, then perhaps that can be a powerful lever towards creating even more um, uh, energetic coalitions to move things forward. Thank you. Talison? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to share from my from my tradition which is methodism then uh, the founder john wesley basically said that anything we think of as sin is actually what he called disease in need of healing and i think that's a really compassionate way to look at things when we react to things in ways that we don't think are helpful which part of us is suffering and broken and in need of healing when people around us are reacting in ways that are not helpful or that are causing pain? What parts of them are broken or wounded and in need of healing and compassion? And our world obviously is suffering and in need of compassion and healing. And I find that that framework can just evoke a kind of compassionate response for ourselves and for one another. These kinds of pandemic situations can put people in their hind brains and then instead of really reacting from a grounded place, we can kind of react from a place of fear. And so I hope that we can just find the compassion to, you know, the way if a little child fell down and scraped their knee and were running towards you crying, you would respond with open arms and an embrace. And I think that's how we should be trying to respond to our own wounds and to the wounds of the world. Thank you. Ian? I mean, final idea would be um, for me, um, resiliency for activists and practitioners working on the healing of the world might look like living, learning to live with having big feelings about the destruction of the environment, learning to live and carry over a long period sustained feelings of tremendous grief, anger, even rage. And to have, to find a way to befriend these powerful emotions that we indeed should have. And so far as we're not having the emotions, we're stuck in a we're stuck in a framework of denial that will keep the patterns going. So I think we we need spaces, community spaces, support to cultivate and befriend these very big emotions, which we then have to learn how to routinely access and tap into for powerful responses. Furthermore, we need to coordinate these emotions amongst each other. In, in the in the activist circles we have, we have to cultivate a, a, a large and powerful sense of feeling and learn how to hold that in constructive fashion and, and channel that towards um, you know healing work not let it derail us to some kind of destructive behavior but to to skillfully hold and cultivate and access these emotions we need this thank you to all of you so um, thank you for, for, for coming everyone and just may you be strong May you be compassionate. May you find courage and you continue in the work that you do for helping to sustain and heal our planet and all that it contains. Thank you very much. And a uh, big thank you very much also from me um, for all of you, Rabbi Katie, Rabbi Moshe, um, Talison, and Reverend Ian. Um, this was wonderful. Um, I will quickly say a few words about the um, the next session that will start in about five minutes. We are going to focus on 101 on sustainable investment. So everyone um, have a short break and see you again in five minutes. Thank you very, very much for this session.